It's like pouring gasoline in a fire. You can read all the books about sharks you want, but this is the only way I know how to truly understand them. Sometimes when I'm in the water with mako sharks, they go after my feet. Who knows what could show up? A five, six, seven hundred pound mako could easily show up. We view them as ruthless killers. They are, but there is far more going on and I'm here to find out. I am Manny Puig. I have spent my whole life learning to survive like Tarzan in the most dangerous and primitive wilderness where you can be killed or eaten. I have learned the ways of giant man-eating predators, deadly sharks and reptiles, where every encounter may spell disaster in the savage wild. miles off the coast of California. I am on the hunt, hoping to encounter, in my opinion, the most ferocious and noble savage of the open ocean, the shortfin mako shark. The ocean is vast, and these encounters are never guaranteed. So to improve my chances, we have brought one of the most experienced pro shark guides on the west coast, Shark White. If anyone can find them, he can. Schools of dolphin accompany us on our journey, but as playful as they are, we are all in deep thought. This is truly dangerous and we know it. Actually, the big mangoes eat a lot of these dolphins. Uh, a lot of times when big mangoes have been caught, their bellies have been stuck in these dolphins that are out here. As you can see, they're very plentiful, uh, but still there's no telling what we're gonna find. Uh, just gonna give it my best shot and see what happens. are plentiful out here. Uh, the blue sharks can get very aggressive. They're very prone to biting. I mean, you turn your back and he's got onto you. Blue sharks are extremely attacking shark, in my opinion. They're always going for your ankles. You gotta keep your eye on them. And especially once I feed them, they just want a part of me. You know, they just, they'll come all around me like that. good water temperature, so I'm gonna go up on the tower and see if I can find a kelp patch. Well, we're rigging this uh, small camera. We actually have uh, an extended handle on it so you can get a two handle hold on it and you're not on the same axis and you're not rocking it back and forth. This steadies it out. Also, you can feed it to a shark if he's really aggressive. You can put it right in his mouth or push him away with it if you have to and not really put your hands in as much danger as well. It's got a wide angle lens on the front so we can get real close to the action and uh, you know really get some great stuff up close. As you'll notice, uh, Manny doesn't say a lot until the action actually starts. He likes to stay really reserved, likes to conserve his energy, doesn't want to talk a lot, doesn't really want to talk about what might happen. He never does that. He wants the action to happen and then he'll come alive. So as 
very typical of Manny. All right, so what we're doing now is we're getting set up with the chum line. We're gonna go ahead and establish a chum line. Chuck White, our uh, pro guide here, uh, has this milk crate with floats on it, and basically he's gonna fill that with chum, let it trail behind the boat, and it'll set up a really strong chum line that'll drift out behind us. Uh, and then once we get some sharks coming in, then uh, we'll uh, get in the water. What fascinates me is not how we perceive sharks, but how they perceive us. Have they ever seen a human? Probably not. So they will behave based on instinct. But make us more intelligent than most sharks. There is more going on here, and I can sense it. Chuck, a big mako coming in over there. Man, that's a killer machine. Look at the size of that thing. That's one of the biggest ones I've seen out here this year. Awesome. 60 miles off the coast of California, in water thousands of feet deep, I'm hoping to encounter the most lethal open water shark, the short fin mako. Our pro guide, Chuck White, has led us to this spot. Makos are highly intelligent compared to other sharks. And this is what fascinates me. I need to understand them. They are far more than just killing machines. Each encounter reveals a little more of their true nature. I feel that makos are very intelligent. Uh, the way they look at you, the way they act, uh, just how they live out here. So the mako is the fastest shark. He's very powerful. He's intelligent. He's a hunter of the open blue. And that combination makes him a very lethal shark, extremely dangerous. What saves humanity from the mako is the mako lives far away at sea. It doesn't, it rarely will come near a beach or anything like that. People do not live in the world of the mako. And that's what cape keeps humanity separate from being exposed to the dangerous mako shark. The chum puts out a slick, and the slick will go out, depending on how long you've had it out, it could be out one, two, three miles. And that's just a scent that tells the fish there's something to eat. So they can come swimming in from either direction and work their way right up to the boat. And that's where we want to get, where we can see them and see what size they are. If we are fishing, we can adjust the tackle to the size fish we see. So we're not fishing a 80 pound mako with 130 pound test. It's really important for the cameraman to keep the chum and the smell of the fish and the bait off of us. We're paying attention to the shot. We're trying to get in there on Manny and really pay attention to what Manny's doing with the fish. It's okay for Manny to get the chum and the bait and everything on him. He's handling fish, he's doing all that, but he can handle himself. The cameraman really has a blind spot behind him, and uh, one of the jobs I've got today is to keep the sharks off of Quet Day while he's in real close. I'll have the luxury of being able to look around me a little bit, make sure if something's coming up underneath us, I can either keep it off Quet Day or at least warn him. And, uh, and at the same time, I'll be able to get a lot of great action myself with the sharks. It doesn't matter. We're going to have shum all over us. I mean, in the tropics, when I don't use the hood, I spent three days picking pieces of barracuda and fish out of my hair. Is I'm chunking like this, and I'm, I'm when you I'm a ball of blood in the water. I mean, I'm just just blood showing all over me and everything. I'm trying to bring the sharks to me, so I was like, don't even worry about that. You know, they're gonna be covered in it. It's gonna be on their suits, oil, everything. You know, as a matter of fact, the problem is we gotta let it clear up sometimes so they can video because it's too foggy. But uh, it, it gets all in here on me. But at least I got a hood now, so it won't be you know that bad. Well, a lot of people are under the impression, especially people that uh, dive with sharks and work with them, it seems like the guy who has the fastest heart rate, the sharks always seem to go right for that person, especially if that person's agitated and they're not smooth in the water. Uh, when you got a lot of sharks around you like this, uh, what you wanna do is really be smooth, calm, do not act like food. Do not back up. If a shark's coming at you, you want to go straight at it. Let it know you're dangerous too. Sharks aren't looking for a fight. They're looking for a meal. And so if you give them the impression that, hey, I'm going to hurt you if you come near me, generally, <laughs> there are no hard, fast rules out here. Generally, that'll really help. And uh, you can kind of keep them off you and keep them at bay. But I imagine in this situation, you can work them up so much. And I know that's what Manny's uh, goal is, is to get these guys worked up so much they are going to get, you know, they kind of they kind of get out of control. And so in that situation, we really got to be watching each other's backs. We really got to be paying attention to what's going on around us. I'm very comfortable with my crew. Uh, Robin here is the producer. He's a smart guy. Uh, Quit over here, he's like ice. 
Yeah, you don't get no reaction out of him. He's just like that. And a lot of times, like, quit, they're behind you. You know, I gotta go back up, but he's, he's, he's ice. I started diving uh, off California when I was nine years old. It's uh, quite a few years back now. And I remember uh, one of the most exciting things for me was to get up on the bow of the boat as we made our way across to the Channel Islands or to Catalina and uh, look over the bow of the boat and about every 200 yards, a big blue shark, nice big beautiful blue shark would actually, we'd almost cross right over the top of it and the blue shark would roll over and look at me with that eye and then boom, take off. And it was so exciting to me at the age of nine years old, I can remember that so clearly. And uh, you almost never see that anymore. Um, illegal long lining uh, has, has literally devastated shark populations. Uh, it's estimated that over 100 million sharks worldwide are taken every year now, mostly for their fins. The rest of the sharks just thrown right back in the water. And out of that 100 million, they estimate 40 million are blue sharks. So the blue sharks have really been devastated and they're absolutely magnificent, beautiful animals. Probably the prettiest shark uh, it, that swims. Uh, long, sleek, blue animal. A big mako coming in over there. Yeah, I see him. I knew we would find sharks, but I had no idea so many would be coming at us nonstop from every angle. Okay, Robin, don't worry, I got your back. We're keeping an eye on it. With each encounter, I'm learning even more about these amazing predators, how they interact with me and each other. They're so subtle, but the clues are here. After a three hour boat ride into the Pacific, our pro shark guide, Shark White, has put us on a promising spot using satellite images to locate warm water. I keep my mind focused on the task ahead to attract and interact with a true noble savage, the short fin mako. But even with this much preparation, we're just tiny specks in this vast blue wilderness. And I worry, will all this effort pay off? California sea lion probably actually just saw the boat from a distance and cruised on over. They know what uh, fishing boats are all about. Uh, we're not actually fishing, but I'm sure he'll uh, he'll enjoy the chum and he'll probably try to take the uh, bait from Manny. Uh, believe it or not, a California sea lion, a full-grown California sea lion, will eat small blue sharks. They'll swim right in there with them. And in fact, uh, a great white can't really even catch a sea lion if the sea lion sees the great white first. If they're ambush predators, they're gonna come exploding up and grab something before it sees them. But if the sea lion actually has eye contact first, there's almost no way they, they can uh, actually catch a uh, sea lion. They're far too agile, far too acrobatic. They can turn on a dime. Well, my job out there is to get the action get as close as possible to Manny. Uh, I've got a wide angle camera lens on it. So I can be two, two feet away from him and still see the, the shark and Manny. Uh, if I back off, I back off to about four feet. Uh, and still, they pretty much fill up the screen. But uh, you can get right up in there, you know, six inches away from it and still get, get enough, uh, enough of the wide angle to see the, uh, the animal's head and the Check. mouth. And so you gotta be pretty close in there. You want to hand me my camera? Let me get set up here. It's amazing how far things have come in uh, 20, 30 years. Uh, actually, even the last five years, it's amazing. But uh, just think what Jacques Cousteau and those guys would have done to have a system like this. Uh, here we've got like an hour's worth of video and uh, a battery that'll go all day uh, and, and uh, total control over the camera. Uh, it's, it's really amazing how good these uh, systems are. They're so state of the art. I settled in for what I know will be a long wait. Mako sharks don't just come charging up from the deep. You have to give them a good reason to appear. And then, if there's nothing to keep them, they will disappear just as fast. By making noise as I shred each skipjack tuna, the sharks will actually think I'm feeding and will attempt to steal my food from me. But I have to pace myself. 
If the sharks don't show up for an hour or two, I can actually wear myself out chunking these frozen skipjack. The shun bucket that Chuck White has tied off to the boat will spread a slick for miles. But for now, below us only clear blue water and strange jellyfish-like creatures that live in the open sea. charging straight in together, a five-footer and a small one. I am thrilled to see them, and these are only the first to arrive. We are 60 miles offshore and water thousands of feet deep, hoping to encounter the noble savage of the open seas, the short fin mako. And it seems we may have hit the jackpot. Within 20 minutes of steady shumming, two beautiful makos have charged onto the scene. They're sizing us up, and I can almost read their minds. They want to steal my fish and then rip us to pieces. Two healthy makos are stalking us. For now, they keep their distance. Two of them. I can't really relax. And then they disappear into the gloom like ghosts. Two, five, four, five foot makos. Unbelievable. Real inquisitive, real careful sharks when they came in. They're still around. I think they've got friends. She's only a pup, and she's totally fearless. Her inexperience, aggression, and lack of fear make her far more dangerous than you think. She may be only three feet long, but this is a perfect little killer. She could take a bite out of you the size of a grapefruit before you even knew what happened. But she's so beautiful, and I wonder what her world is like. The competition for food must make her even more prone to rushing in for a bite. She seems agitated. The shum has her totally worked up. In a flash, things get really dangerous. Instinctively, she goes for my legs. And I lose her for a second. This is how the Mako takes down big game. And for her, I am big game. Right 
She seems worried about taking fish from my hand, but I continue shumming, bringing her in closer. This is a view you will never forget. The business end of the most efficient killer that swims. The threads on her dorsal fins are actually a type of parasite. She may be the first to show up at the party. But this pup is not alone. Soon, much larger makos will appear.